I'm here at the University of St. Joseph where a wonderful theater production is taking place. It's called Return of the Soldier and here is the playwright and here is one of the stars of the play. Playwright is Allison. Hello, Allison. Hello, John. And one of the stars is Jen. Hello, Jen. Hi, John. And I hope you all are doing well. This is Allison's first play that she wrote. She adapted it from a book called, Hey, Return of the Soldier. There's no hey in it, but still, Return of the Soldier, you get the point. And this is Allison's first play. So Allison, tell me what that experience was like. Uh, well, I had no formal playwriting experience at all. And the only instruction I had was a 1970s handbook um, that was originally my uh, professor's college copy uh, from when he took playwriting in college. So that was all I had to go off of. Uh, what I really did was I just uh, watched a lot of plays, watched movies, and really listened for good dialogue and figured out what made people interested in stories. Uh, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I revised, and a year later I had a, a play. And I found out that I really liked it and found a passion in it. Uh, I think that I've always loved theater, so it was kind of natural for me, and I love writing. So to put those two things together, it just made sense. Did you go up to Mark and say, hey, I'd like to write a no, play? No, not at all. Uh, so Return of the Soldier is how it started. It is a novel by Rebecca West, who was a very, very interesting British uh, novelist, uh, obviously a female, who wrote wor in, during World War I, and she was very firmly anti-war, very socially active, uh, very politically involved writer. And the school ended up choosing her book uh, to put for all the curriculums uh, for all of the incoming students. Uh, so Mark came up to me and asked, it's a rather short novel, and asked if I would be interested in writing a play based on the book. Uh, at first, I hadn't read it when he first asked me, uh, but I read, I read through it, and I thought that there was definitely something dramatic about the book. Uh, it only has four characters, which already lent itself really well to um, a dramatic format. Uh, so I read through it, and I came up with an outline, uh, and it kind of started from there. Well, Jennifer, describe one of the characters that you play in this wonderful production. Okay. Um, I play Kitty. She is the wife of the main character, Chris. Um, her husband goes off to war and he comes back and basically forgets who she is. She, he, has, he doesn't remember being married. What he does remember, however, is his ex-girlfriend. So my character, Kitty, she tries, to, she's, she's very proper and she, likes, she has to keep all her emotions contained. She's very, she puts on the act. She's going to be the proper lady of the house. She's going to pretend that everything's okay even though everything is definitely not. Um, but yeah, Kitty's an interesting character. She come, some, at first when I read the character, um, a bunch of us had said that she was really not very nice and she's a really mean person, but she's not. She's just, she's been handed a bad, she's got a, been given a bad hand, you know? She's, she's misunderstood. Now Allison, uh, compare the experience of being a playwright uh, versus being an actress, being the one who is actually speaking the words on the page. It's very, very different, uh, more different than I thought it would be, because more than being an actress and having something to work off of, it's really creating something uh, and figuring out how the words are going to fit together. And mostly it's figuring out how an audience will react to what you've written uh, and trying to put together a scene that makes sense but is also dramatic. Um, it's so much less about um, about being the people, it's so much more about understanding how the people interact with each other. Uh, because that really dictates who they are uh, on stage. Because we don't get to see the inside of their head like we do in a book, we only get to see them with other people. So that's, uh, so it's less about getting inside the heads of each of the characters, but instead understanding how they work together. Uh, but on that note, to uh, make characters, it was quite difficult. Uh, to really understand how each of them would interact in reality. Because I was going off of a, a novel that was from uh, 1910, focused a lot on description, focused a lot on uh, kind of political ideology, and didn't really focus a lot on the characters. Um, so I really used uh, a lot of people from my own life, uh, a lot of observation about how people in real life interact with each other. And that's really where I started from in writing this uh, play. So it's very, very different 
uh, writing a play versus acting in it because you don't have a foundation. You don't really know where you're going. Uh, whereas when you get words on a script, you have people to ask. I didn't really have anyone to ask. Describe the, pro the collaboration process between writer and director because, yes. you know, someone, they, they, they write a stuff. They, yeah, they, they write, write a stuff. <laughs> they write words and then the director has to say, hey, I'm right. going to direct actors based on these words. Right. So how is it with director Mark Zielinski? Was he very critical? Did he mostly keep everything intact? What was that like? Well, working with Mark Zielinski, my best friend in the world, um, it... How do I describe Mark? He does a very good job. And before now, I never understood how crucial a director was before I realized that it really is understanding how to communicate uh, to actors, which is something that I never really thought about before um, because I thought that as a playwright, I would just be able to communicate to the actors exactly how I wanted it to be said and have it done. But it really does take that talent to know how to say something to an actor to get them to do what you want. So he's been excellent in understanding what I want and understanding how to get that on stage. Um, I've been working with him since the beginning of this project. He's obviously the one who came to me about it and he's the one who uh, worked with me as I was revising it um, over and over again. So he, uh, he's been very involved. He is, has been really excellent in uh, getting us to where we are now. So this first experience, having your work put on the stage, yes. it has not scared you, it, it has encouraged you. It has, definitely. Um, I was, I could either have gone into this being like it was a one-time thing or gone into it uh, maybe thinking about it as a possibility. And the more and more as I wrote, uh, I realized that I had a passion um, for, as, as an actor, you kind of mythicize the, uh, the playwright and think that they're God uh, because they're writing these words and they're creating this world for you. But realizing that I could create that world too and realizing uh, how much you can do when you put words on a page uh, really drew me to playwriting. It's understanding how life works um, and understanding how people work. Uh, so that's fascinating to me. So that's what really drew me to it. Gracie Grace Graceland. <laughs> Is there um, a part of your character that you would consider a uh, daring, risky acting challenge compared to characters you've played in the past? Something that uh, kind of makes you sweat in the knees, but you have to take it on anyway because, of course, Miss Allison is going to you know, whip you if you don't? I don't know about sweating in the knees, but um, I would say that um, my character, Jenny, is very intriguing in that she is very, um, she can be very saucy. She has a very, uh, she can be snarky when she's very intelligent, but she's also very compassionate and sincere. And so her interaction with the other characters kind of comprise of these two very different um, traits in her personality. Um, but overall, she really, she cares about the characters, but inside she feels kind of neglected. Um, she feels uh, kind of lonely and overlooked by everyone. Like she is the one focused on taking care of everyone else. And so in that, she kind of gets forgotten. And so it's a very interesting dynamic to try to portray on a stage without ever having um, too many lines that actually imply that. So it's all about like, um, kind of like, you know, uh, hidden facial expressions or just different, um, different ways of expressing it without maybe verbalizing it. And so I definitely am finding that um, more of a challenge. Now, did you take a look at World War I, just kind of that era in general, just to get an idea of what the character's thought process and way of life was like back then? Um, I've done a little bit of research, not too, probably not as much as I should have, not as much as Allison has. Um, but it's definitely more like, um, repressed, I guess, as um, Janeth was saying earlier. Um, it's definitely more um, constrained. Society was very uh, oppressive on especially emotional outbursts. And so uh, I guess what's interesting about Jenny is that you can see some of her emotions where you can't see that in the other characters. Because it is told in the first, it's, it's a narrative by Jenny. And so you're able to see into her head. Um, you can see what she's thinking, and um, which you can't with other characters. And so 
that does give Jenny kind of an edge in that you can relate to her more because she can express her emotions through her mind. Now, since you have a buttload of monologues for this play, um, which kind of acting do you prefer? Do you prefer the kind of acting where it's monologues, where it's just you and you get to focus on your character and your lines, the focus is on you, or a dialogue, a scene between you and another person or two people? I mean, you know, what, which, which acting or which kind of acting uh, floats your boat? Um. I love monologues, but I would have to say that I really like dialogues in that it's so much fun to play off the other actor's energy. With a dialogue, you have to bring all the energy yourself and really try to give that to the audience or who, whatever you are addressing in the monologue. But um, with a dialogue, it's just so much fun to really play off the other actor's emotion and their energy and bring your own energy. And that's just something that I enjoy doing so much. So. I'd have to say dialogues. Okay. Now, I'll pass that question along to you in a writing sense. Okay. Monologues or dialogue? Which is more exciting or more challenging to write? Dialogue, um, they're each challenging in their own way. With a monologue, you risk uh, the audience getting bored really quickly because a monologue has to be going somewhere. And that's something I learned really quickly when I would write something and then read it out loud and realize it was boring as sin. Um, <laughs> So I just had to uh, really understand that a monologue has to go somewhere and has to be leading uh, the character and the audience towards a point of understanding or, or revelation of some sort. Uh, so that's the real challenge in monologues. On the converse, though, uh, dialogue is so, so tricky because not only can it get boring, it can get very forced. Um, so overall, I prefer, uh, I would say, writing di dialogue because it is that real insight into the way we interact. And like Grace was saying, the way we try to communicate things to each other without saying it. Um, so that's the real challenge in writing dialogue and in writing plays in general. It's the ways that we don't say what we're thinking uh, and talk around issues, uh, which is a lot of what this play is about. It's a lot of people talking around the issues that they can't address because society condemns it. Uh, so, um, overall, I would say uh, writing dialogue is both more challenging and more rewarding. Well, this seems like a wonderful, invigorating, raw production. Um, it's called Return of the Soldier. It's going to be here at the University of St. Joseph, the Hoffman Auditorium to be specific. What are the dates? November 19th, 20th, and 21st at 7.30 p.m. Uh, tickets can be uh, purchased by calling the Hoffman Auditorium box office or by calling 860-321-5555. Uh, Is that your cell phone number? Uh, no, it is actually, no, it is not. It is the uh, number for the box office here. Oh, okay. I have it memorized. <laughs> I was going to say, like, oh, just call me on my cell phone. Yeah, no, and no. I'll get you tickets on the street. Yeah. Um, 